Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. It is week 12 in the National Football League, and we kick things off at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time with the Houston Texans and the Detroit Lions. The Lions have lost three straight on Thanksgiving Day. Give me Deshaun Watson and the Texans. This game going to be a close one. It's going to be a fun one, but I expect Deshaun to have a big day, and I'm going to go with the Texans. Then at 4.30 p.m. later today, the Washington football team and the Dallas Cowboys will face off. Both teams are 3-7. and seven. This matchup could be a first-place matchup, depending on how the Eagles and the Giants fare this week. Dallas is 8-1 and all-time versus Washington on Thanksgiving, and I expect... You know, I Dallas looked good last week against Minnesota. But Washington is trending upwards. Alex Smith has looked sharp. I, I mean, relatively sharp. What, what honestly can you expect coming off of that injury? Uh, these are his first ball games in, in over two years. So um, I want to pick. I don't want to pick either of these teams as a Giants fan with a shot in first place here late in November. So I think better for the longevity of this. I'm going to pick Washington. I think that's the smart play. We want to root. Giants fans want to root for Washington um, this week. You push the Cowboys down further. We have the tiebreaker against uh, Washington. And we, we we can split the series with the Cowboys later on this season. Uh, so it, it, this is a pivotal game in the, in the race for the NFC East. And I have to pick Washington as a Giants fan, so they're my pick. Then on Sunday at 1 p.m., the Chargers will take on the Bills. Keenan Allen and Stephon Diggs are number one and two in receptions this season. Justin Herbert has looked phenomenal. Everybody knows that. Uh, he is just one of those rookies that you think about um, in, in, in the conversation of Rookie of the Year. And he should win it. He, he should have won it before Joe Burrow tore his ACL, and he should win it now. He is... Better than a lot of starting quarterbacks on a lot of teams. Looking at you, Chicago. Uh, it, it, he's just phenomenal. I'm a big fan of Justin Herbert, and I can't wait to see what he does for many, many years. So give me Herbert and and the Chargers. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the I'm gonna go with the upset. Give me Herbert and the Chargers. The three and seven over the seven and three. I'm probably gonna eat crow for that one, but uh, I don't know. Just had a funny feeling as I was breaking that down. So give me LA. Then the New York Giants will face the Cincinnati Bengals. The Giants are 0-5 versus non-NFC East opponents this season, which means we are 3-2 against the NFC East. But we are playing the Bengals, who lost Joe Burrow. They won't have Joe Mixon. Uh, they have an offensive line that is just unbelievably horrible. And the Giants are getting back two key defensive pieces. Uh, well, they are gaining one for the first time and getting back one. O'Shane Ziminis is coming back, and we are gaining Xavier McKinney for the first time this season. So it's going to be an interesting game to see how we run our defense. If we want to keep it the same and just try to get McKinney in as, as slowly and progressively as possible or run a 3-3-5. Three, three, uh, there's a lot, a lot of options for Patrick Graham on that side of the ball. And it's just this game was well, going to tell a lot about the New York Giants. If we are uh, trending in the right direction, then we'll walk all over Cincinnati. But if we are pretenders and we are going to be stuck in mediocrity for a long time, we're going to either play this game close or just flat out lose. And the Giants have to win this game. They win this game and the Eagles lose. They are sole possessors of first place. Uh, unless the Cowboys were to win then the Cowboys would be in first place due to the tiebreaker. But, you know what, no. That's false. The Giants have more division wins, so the Giants would be in first place. If I have the understanding of tiebreakers correct. So the Giants need this win, and they'll be in first place in the NFC East in late November. And the next time we'll kick off is in December. So, it's going to be uh, this game. I just want to fact check myself. Yes, the next time we will kick off is in... September or er, whoo is in December there we go uh, but this is a crucial game for the New York Giants they need to win this 
if they want to be in first place. And I have to pick them. As a Giants fan, and as a smart man, and a guy who wants to see his team in the postseason, give me the New York Giants. Then the Titans and the Colts will face off battle for first place in the AFC South. I'm going to take Indianapolis in this game. I just think Tennessee is a little too up and down right now. They need to gain some consistency on on both sides of the football. They just they don't look they don't look dominant right now. And yeah, I mean Derrick Henry is Derrick Henry. He's going to do what he does, but I think we need to see a little more out of Tannehill. The defense has got to step up and carry their weight. And Indianapolis has looked I, solid. I mean, they've looked solid. Have they looked great? No. Are they the worst 7-3 and three team in the league? Probably. Are they going to win this game? I think so. So, give me Indy in this game. Then the Browns and the Jags will play. Uh, I like Cleveland. 7-3 and three versus 1-9. and nine. Um, Cleveland has only allowed 13.3 points per game since week 8. That's second fewest in the NFL, so the defense is trending in the right direction. I like Cleveland. Give me them. Then the Las Vegas Raiders will take on the Atlanta Falcons. Vegas is 4-1 and one on the road, 2-3 and three at home. This game is going to be played at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. I like the Raiders in this game. Derek Carr is he's, he's really good, and he plays really well. At least he has this season. John Gruden's got those boys playing some inspired football, and it shows uh, in all three facets of the game. So give me the Raiders. I presume the Falcons will blow a lead at some point, whether it's a three-point lead, a one-point lead. They'll blow a lead of some sort. So give me Vegas. Then the Panthers and the Vikings Vikings have won two of their last three versus Carolina, but P.J. Walker had himself a nice game in his first NFL start for Carolina, and the Vikings are reeling after getting beaten up by the Cowboys last Sunday. Give me Carolina. I don't know if that's necessarily an upset. I, I honestly thought the Vikings had a better record than 4-6. and six. That's kind of surprising to me, but at the same time, it doesn't surprise me at all because Kirk Cousins is a joke of a quarterback. Uh, yeah, give me the Panthers in the upset. I want to know what the line is on that game. See if I'm, you know, see if I were to bet on this game if I'd win some money <laughs> picking the Panthers. But I'm going to pick Carolina. They, uh, to me, just, I, I, I don't know. Something about P.J. Walker has got me confident about this team. Hopefully, I, I think he's going to be playing this game. So, it, even if it's Teddy Bridgewater, I expect it to be a win for Carolina. Then the Cardinals will play the Patriots. Patriots are scoring 20.9 points per game this season. That's the fewest for them since 2000. They're probably going to lose this game. I don't see Cam Newton being able to push the ball down the field effectively enough to, to, to keep pace and match this Cardinal offense. He couldn't do it last week with Houston, and he's just going to struggle. This week with uh, Arizona, so give me the Cardinals. Then the Dolphins and the Jets will play. Miami has won five of their last six. Benching to uh, Tua Tungavailoa last week was the wrong move. Hopefully him and the team can gain their confidence back uh, against a team that shouldn't honestly be an easy win. And the Dolphins should get to 7-4, and four, so they are going to be my pick. Then the Ravens will play the Steelers this game was originally slated for primetime on Thursday uh, Thanksgiving, but it got postponed to Sunday. Uh, the Ravens, I don't see them having a chance in this football game. Uh, you know what? I'm going to retract that statement. The Ravens do have a great chance because the Steelers, I just looked at the records, and that's why I was like, oh, no way do they have a chance. But the Steelers have been taken to the wire by bad teams. And in games that they really honestly should be winning by 50 or more, they come down to plays instead of series or drives or halves. It's it's a little it's a little astounding that the Steelers are 10 and 0, and they really don't have a statement win. They haven't beaten anybody serious. And if they win this game, this isn't a statement win. This is a six and four Baltimore team that looks nothing like the team last year that had Lamar Jackson go on to win MVP. 
I'm gonna pick the Ravens in this game. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick them for the upset. So uh, we'll we'll see what happens on Sunday afternoon. Then at 4:05, the 49ers and the Rams will play. The Rams uh, have lost three straight versus San Francisco. That I expect to be snapped. The 49ers, obviously, we know about how hard they've been hit by the injury bug. Uh, and the Rams are trending upwards. They just beat Tampa Bay on Monday night. That's a statement win right there. I think that uh, they can carry that momentum into a playoff push. They'll probably end up in the divisional round at the very least. So give me L.A. Then the Saints will play the Broncos. Saints are going to need this win here to stay atop the NFC. Uh, I think they're going to get it too pretty easily. So give me New Orleans. Give me... Uh, Taysom Hill or Jameis Winston or whoever they want to throw out there quarterback still going to be a better option than Drew Locke right now so I've got the Saints then the Kansas City Chiefs will play the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this game surprisingly is not the Sunday night matchup or the Monday night matchup uh, which is pretty astounding to me it's just a late game at, at 4 o'clock 4, 425 to be exact Kansas City is allowed 20 or fewer in 7 games this season and they have played 10 that's that's some incredible stuff out of Kansas City. That that defense is playing is playing some good football, uh, unless they're playing Las Vegas, in which they don't play defense at all. But Tampa Bay has some serious problems with continuity and 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 and, and everybody being on the same page. Nobody seems to be on the same page in Tampa Bay, and that's a problem. Other than Brady and 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 Antonio Brown. He can't really find any consistent connections to Godwin or to Evans or to Gronk. And, I mean, Fournette's got his problems. He's not running at all inspired. He's got a dropping issue right now. Uh, Ronald Jones just hasn't been able to do a whole lot with the limited amount of carries he's been given. Uh, their struggles against against LA on Monday night are really indicative of the state that Tampa Bay is in right now. They just don't have anything on their resume that blows me out of the water and, and tells me, hey, this is the team that we thought they were going to be in the postseason. And it has taken them a long time to get this right. We see this all the time. Teams will bring in a lot of talent, a lot of free agents, a lot of, you know, a lot of whoever's, and it just doesn't quite gel. And Bruce Arians, I don't think, is the right coach to coach all of these guys. To coach Antonio Brown. To coach Leonard Fournette. To coach Tom Brady. Three guys with massive egos. Two of which are un undoubtedly the biggest divas in the National Football League. I just don't think he's the right guy to, to lead this football team. Imagine you swap the coaching staffs. For Tampa Bay in New England. And the Buccaneers are undefeated and they win the Super Bowl. Coaching goes a long way. Yes, this team can win games based on their talent. And they have. They have won seven games based on their talent. But they have also come very, very close to losing games that they should not. Point in, in case, Monday night a few weeks ago against the Giants. Coming down to a blown pass interference call. Uh, on the Giants' two-point conversion attempt late in that game. Who knows where that game goes after that. But the Giants got robbed, and the Buccaneers got away with one. They'd be 6-5 and five right now had they lost to the Giants. That is not good. They're the sixth seed in the NFC right now. They're going to have to play on wildcard weekend regardless because they ain't getting no number one seed. They blew their... They had a chance... If they had split the series with, with New Orleans and then taken care of their own business, then they would have had a chance at the number one seed. But now they don't because they were swept by the Saints. And that's their fault and their problem. Tampa Bay's got a lot of questions. And when you got a lot of questions like that, you don't win these football games against teams that are this good. So I, I'm picking Kansas City. They're going to walk away with this one. Then at 8.20 p.m. on Sunday, the Bears and the Packers will meet up. The Packers are 17-4 versus Chicago since 2010, including the playoffs. i got to give it to Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. They need a win badly, like a, 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 a win that they can feel good about. 
and a win that they can carry down the stretch. Their three losses this year have been bad losses. So they, they need this one. I'm picking Green Bay. Then on Monday night at 8.15, the Seahawks will play the Eagles. The Seahawks are 2-3 and three on the road, 5-0 and oh at home. And this game is in Philadelphia. I, for some reason, have only been thinking about this upset and all the reasons why it's going to happen. <laughs> I just have this really awful gut feeling the Eagles are going to win this game. But uh, the Seahawks should take care of business. They should. Regardless of how bad their defense is, Russell Wilson needs to put this team on his back and win this game. Like, flat out no excuses. Stop throwing turnovers. Or stop stop turning the ball over. Like, you're Russell Wilson. You were in the MVP race for how long and then you just turn into a turnover machine? Fix it! Nobody takes the Seahawks seriously right now because their defense is bad. Uh, if they go to the Super Bowl against the, the against the Chiefs, everyone knows who's going to win that game. There's no there's no question. The Chiefs would walk all over this team, and it wouldn't even be close. Seattle might score 40, but the Chiefs will score 70. Seattle needs to gain some confidence. They need to put down the teams they need to put down. Eagles are one of them. I'm going with Seattle. That, my friends is a full slate. I believe from here on out, no more buys. So it's all football all the time. That's going to do it for week 12, Turkey Day week. I hope that you all enjoy some football. Get full. Stay safe. Stay happy. Do all that fun stuff. Wear your masks. Uh, keeping everybody else safe. So that next year, our Thanksgiving Day parade isn't weird and silent. So thank you all so much for watching. And I'll catch you guys next week.